Well, I guess for us, the conversation about growth versus value uh, is more about free cash flow generation. And what I mean by that is current free cash flow generation versus future expected free cash flow. Uh, for us, we focus not only on the current free cash flow generation of a company, but also the future growth of it. Uh, these companies tend to not only pay dividends, but also raise those dividends over time as well, which creates uh, a compounding effect and creates significant value. But that being said, we also do want to recognize that there are times when free cash flow can be impaired. Um, from the cyclical standpoint, for example, we know that free cash flow will be much better at the peak of a, tr of a cycle versus the trough. Uh, we actually want to invest in those companies when we see a resumption in free cash flow um, from trough back to normal, as long as that free cash flow is significant to cover the dividend in the balance sheet. Well, for us, I think the, the first place we start is, um, you know, when we're looking at a turnaround is the free cash flow generation. That's number one, right, is making sure that free cash flow is still present, even though the business might be temporarily impaired, that free cash flow is still present significant enough to not only cover CapEx needs, the dividend if there is a, a, a dividend present, as well as the debt obligations. Um, so the free cash flow generation has to be there for one. Two, uh, we also want to look at you know, whether or not this company is trading towards apathy, um, you know, somewhere along the lines of apathy versus speculation, we want that company to be more at apathy. Uh, we also want to see a decent management team present um, with a good strategy for a turnaround, uh, a balance sheet that is not overly levered. And, um, you know, we would look for companies that um, have some sort of innovation or potentially some pricing power present would be ideal. You know, that said, we're never going to get it all right. Um, you know, the nice thing about focusing on what I mentioned is uh, if there is a company that um, you know starts to deteriorate along those lines, we would see that very quickly and we would move to, to eliminate the position from the portfolio. You know, when I think about um, the market dynamics, um, I think it's really interesting. You know, if you think about the global economy, the political landscape in, in the U.S., um, recovery from COVID, um, interest rates rising for the first time in a long time, inflation where it is. Uh, you know, we've heard, we've heard some, you know, people commenting this is the first time in 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, right, that, that all these things have happened, and yet everybody's using the same playbook that they've used over the past 20 years, which is, you know, focusing on growth. Um, specifically over the past year, that's been, you know, kind of focusing on maybe the, the, the big uh, technology growing companies. Uh, you know, we think that really all that we've seen is the pendulum swinging, you know, in this debate for, from growth versus value, the last couple of years favored value. We've seen a big, um, you know, kind of swing back to that, that, uh, that technology growth side. Um, I, I don't think that's sustainable. I think, you know, what we're going to see is um, that pendulum kind of finding its normal balance. And with, to us, that is really companies that consi consistently generate that free cash flow that grow that free cash flow, do smart things with that free cash flow, like reinvest in their business at good rates and pay and raise dividends. Those are companies that over time deliver consistent compounding um, and lead to you know outstanding uh, performance over the course of a cycle. Uh, we do recognize, however, that there is opportunities along the sides of the portfolio where you can be cyclical or you can invest in resumption of free cash flow stories, maybe that might be considered a broken growth side. Investors should carefully consider a fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. This and other important information is contained in a fund's full prospectus and summary prospectus, which can be obtained by visiting hartfordfunds.com. Please read it carefully before investing.